Welcome to Watch Me Code. In this first episode of the Architecting Express.js applications, we're going to get the basics of Express set up and running with a few of the tools that I'm going to be using throughout. Now I've gone ahead and run the Express generator in order to actually generate the core of the Express application. I haven't touched anything in here though, but you can see that I've named the application Media because this is going to be a media server. At a later point in time, we'll also add a World Wide Web application for some administrative tasks and reporting systems that we need, but that's going to come much further down the line. And what I want to do by having those two things be separate is illustrate how we can and should keep front-end public-facing things separate from back-end administrative-facing things. And we can do that very easily by having small individual applications, each with their own configuration and their own sets of functionality. In addition to the media server that I've generated from Express.js, I also have the package.json pulled out of the media folder and into the root of the application here. I've got this lib folder, which if you're familiar with the way I do Express.js applications, you should know that I put all of my libraries and individual modules for the application into this folder. I've got my environment configuration, which right now only has a config file for development and is currently empty. I've got my grunt file, which as you can see just has a few basic things in it, but doesn't really do any work yet. So my package.json file, as you see, doesn't have any of the dependencies that I need, including grunt or any of the other grunt dependencies that I've got listed in my grunt file. So that's going to be the first thing that I need to do now that I have my basic structure in place. I'm going to come over to my editor vim here. And I'm going to look at my grunt file to see that I want to install the grunt contrib watch plugin as well as the grunt contrib js hint plugin. So let's go ahead and install those. We'll do npm install. I want to get grunt, of course, grunt contrib watch and grunt contrib js hint. And I'm going to save these to the development profile for my dependencies. So now that we've got those installed, I can see that I do have a node modules folder in my project now. I can look at the package.json again and see that I've got those dependencies installed as well. You may have noticed that I also have this nodemon.json file, which is going to be used by nodemon in order to figure out which folders and files need to be watched so that the application can restart as needed. And I'm using a nodemon.json file because there's a number of different things that I want in here. First of all, I turn on verbose mode because I like to see all of the output of what files and folders are being watched and changed. It just helps me to see if I've got my nodemon configuration set up correctly. Eventually, I might turn verbose off, but for now, I like to have it on, at least at the start of the project. I am going to explicitly watch the media folder as well as the lib folder. Now the media folder is the web application that I'm starting with. It is the media server that will handle HTTP requests and serve out the individual files, as well as do all the tracking and everything else that we need. The lib folder is empty right now, but this is where I'm going to have my mongoose models and other models and chunks of code that I need inside of the media application, as well as the eventual web application. Notice that I'm also ignoring some specific folders. I don't care about the node modules folder. That's a ridiculously large and bloated folder to begin with, and I don't want nodemon having to watch all of those files and folders in there. It would just take up too much system resources doing that. I'm also ignoring a couple of files and folders that are not yet available in this particular project, the web, app, and public, and SAS folders. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those for right now because I don't need them yet. So for the time being, I'm just going to ignore the node modules folder. But I am going to add back in here the media slash public and the media slash views. And I'm doing that because these are things that Nodemon doesn't really need to know about. This public folder is going to be images and JavaScript and style sheets for, the, for an actual web browser, which at the moment, I don't really care about. I'm not going to have a public facing website for this. This is just going to be a media service with HTTP calls and no real HTML UI for users to interact with. Also in the views, well, I'm not really going to have a whole lot in here for views either other than a, a typical error page. And I don't really want Nodemon restarting the server every time one of these Jade files gets touched either. 
it's just not worth having Nodemon pay attention to those, because those are really more front-end things, and the back-end server doesn't need to restart when I'm in development mode when I change those things. But with all of that in place, I can get ready to run Nodemon for the first time and have the actual web service, the media server that I'm building, stand up. Before I do that, though, I need to modify my package.json one more time. Right now, this start script is looking at node bin slash www, which doesn't exist. I need to point this at the media folder and then bin www. That's this file right here, which is the core of the Express.js web server. And I'm modifying the start script here because nodemon by default will use this script as the thing to run when you type nodemon into the command line here. Ah, looks like I've missed a couple of installs with my package.json on trying to run that, so we'll go ahead and do npm install in order to get absolutely everything pulled down and get this up and running. Now that I've got all of that, I can run nodemon, I can head over to my browser, go to localhost 3000, and there's your basic empty default Express.js application. Now I do have Nodemon up and running, so if I come into an app.js or other file inside of the media service and make a change here, I can save that, go back to the command line, and see that Nodemon is going to restart itself. And we see the restart happening right here. And I do have quite a bit of output from Nodemon inside of the console here, more than I actually cared to have at this point in time. Looks like I really didn't need to have this verbose on after all. So I'm going to go ahead and change that back to not being verbose. And now when I go into one of my other files, make a change and save it, now it's a little more reasonable. Restarting due to changes, and there it's actually restarting the application. And of course, it's still up and running. Another thing that I want to get in place is some grunt configuration. I want to have a watch task set up so that I can watch for specific file changes. And in this case, I want to set up a watch for the media service and I'm going to have the files that it looks at pointing to the media routes folders and look at all of the JS files. That way, whenever anything changes inside of the media folder, it'll go ahead and pick that up. And what I want to run for tasks when it does pick up a router change is going to be the JS hint for the media routes. Of course, I need a JS hint configuration now. And now that I have my JS hint configuration in place, I'm going to take a look at my JS hint file itself. I'm going to open up my .js hint RC, and I'm going to see that I've got a bunch of default options in here. And I'm not really going to change any of this or go through any of the options. You can see a previous episode of Watch Me Code in order to understand what goes inside the JS hint file. Now that I have that in place, though, I do want to come over here to the command line again and open up a tab to run grunt. So I now have grunt with the default task running watch. And inside of my grunt file we can see that I've registered the default task of watch. So now, hopefully, anytime I change any of my media routes files, it will run JS hint on there and tell me if there's anything wrong with these routes. So let's go in here, make a save real quick, and see, okay good, it actually is running JS hint correctly. Now that I have all of this in place, it's time to move on to putting some actual functionality into the application. But in order to do that, I'm going to need a couple of different things. This is a media service, and I'm going to be serving media files out of Amazon S3. So stay tuned for the next episode, where we look at setting up an Amazon S3 account, getting it configured inside of our application, and then using the Amazon AWS SDK to create a pre-signed URL that allows us to download a file from Amazon S3, even when that file is protected with security, so that it is not publicly available.